spent the last uh <laughs> so um this was this was his original message when he said you know um it passes uh with flying colors it passes the um the vibes test with with flying colors and so you have some some uh ghost rider comparisons uh ghost rider on the left and um code gen is on the right so here's ghost rider okay i actually don't know what the heck this does <laughs> uh yeah i mean yeah okay uh here's on the right uh code gen namespace is equals zero uh the funny thing is yeah so so Cogen suggested that the names should be zero, um, but uh, Ghost Rider suggests that um, the new process using clone, which will become the new namespace, takes the right. function pointer and so on. Right. right. This this is Amjad eval. This is not okay. like you wouldn't ever see this in a in a human eval data set, right? Okay. Um, so basically, so if I if I summarize it from a for those who are listening, um, the there's a there's a there's a bunch of comments talking about how you basically implement a clone uh, process or mm -hmm. to, to clone a process, um, and it's describing a bunch of possible states that he might want to to match, um, and then it asks for a single line of code for defining what possible values of a namespace it might be to initialize it. Uh, in Amjad eval with uh, what model is this? Is this your this is the, your uh, new model? The, this is the one model? we're releasing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it actually defines constants which are human readable and nice. And then in the other um, cogen Salesforce model, it just def initializes it to zero because yeah. it reads um, that it starts with an int. Yeah, exactly. So interesting. Yeah, so you had a much better uh, explanation of, of that than, uh, than <laughs> I okay. did. It's um, <laughs> So this is, yeah, uh, handle operation. This is on the left. Okay, so this is Replit's version, uh, yeah. where it's implementing a function and an infilling. Is that what it's doing uh, instead of a sum operation? This so this one doesn't actually do the infill, so that's the completion inside of the of the sum operation. But it, okay. it's not it's it it's not taking into account context after this value. But right, right. So it's writing an inline lambda function in Python. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, versus this one is just uh, passing in the nearest available variable it's, it can find. Yeah. Okay. So um, so okay, I'll, I'll get some really good ones in a in a second so okay here's tokenize um so this is an assertion on a value and it's uh helping to basically complete the entire i think it looks like an est that you're writing here mm -hmm. um that's good that's uh, that's that's good and then what does salesforce code gen do this is salesforce code gen here so is that invalid in some way or what, what are we supposed to do it's just this? making up tokens oh okay mm, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah yeah so it's just it's just much better at context Okay. Um and then uh and and I guess to be fair we have to, to uh show a case where co uh cogen does better. <laughs> okay. All right. So here's here's one on the left. Um right, which is another assertion um where it's just saying that if you pass in a list it's going to throw an exception saying it expected a list. Mm -hmm. And Salesforce cogen says It expects an identifier and got this. Why is this better? So this is explaining what's wrong instead of just yeah. This is so so. Um, Ghostwriter it, uh, was sure that um, the first argument needs to be a list um, here. So it hallucinated that it wanted a list, even yeah. though you never said it was going to be a list. Yeah, and it's ah. it's an argument of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so okay, here's a here's a cooler quiz for you all because I struggled with this one for a second. Okay. <laughs> um what is Okay, so this is a for loop example from Amjad. Um and it's it's sort of like a QA context in a chatbot. Um and it's and it asks and Amjad is asking what does this code log and then just paste in some JavaScript code. The JavaScript code is a for loop with a set timeout inside of it uh with a console that console logs out uh, the iteration variable of the for loop and in increasing numbers of uh, of of times, um, so it's it goes from zero to five, and then it just increases the the delay between the timeouts uh, each each time. Yeah. Um, so okay. Uh, so this answer was provided by uh, by Bard, mm -hmm. um, 
And uh, does it look correct to you? Well, the numbers do, but it's not one second. It's uh, the time between them increases. It's like the first one, then the one is one second apart, then it's two seconds, three seconds. So it's yeah. not. Yeah. I, I actually would get this wrong because I, I, I have no idea, actually. Uh, uh, I, I mean, I would have to think about it much harder, but it looks correct to me um, because it starts at zero, one, two, three, and four. And then it's, uh, you're, you're setting the, the times separately. Um, so each of them would actually start logging um, one second apart. With, with, I assume that's wrong. <laughs> well, well, so I, you know, when I saw this and, and the, the message in the thread was like, our model's better than Bard at, at coding. Uh -huh. um, this is the Bard uh, answer uh -huh. uh, that looked totally right to me. And yeah. this is our answer. It logs 5555. Five, five, five. Why does it log 5555? Five, five, five? Oh. Um, Oh, because uh, because it logs uh, the state of I, which uh, is five by the time that the mm. log happens. Yeah. Oh God. So like we, you know, uh, we were shocked. Like, and and the bar dancer looked totally right to to me. Yeah. And then mm. and somehow our code completion model, mind you, like this is not a conversational chat model. Uh huh. Uh, somehow gets this right, and um and you know, Bard obviously a much larger. A uh, much more capable model with all this fancy transfer learning and 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 whatnot. Um, some somehow you know doesn't get it right. So this is the kind of stuff that goes into into Amjad eval that you you won't find in any benchmark. Good. Um, and uh, and and it's it's the kind of thing that you know makes something pass a a, a vibe test at Replit. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, okay. To me, this is not a vibe. This is not so much a vibe test as the, these are just interview questions. Yeah, like we're, yeah, we're that's, straight that's up true. just asking interview yeah. questions right now. Yeah, no, the, the vibe <laughs> test, the, the reason why it's really difficult to kind of show um, screenshots that have a vibe test is because it really kind of depends on like how snappy the completion is, how, um, uh, what the latency feels like and if it gets, if it, if it feels like it's making you more productive. Mm -hmm. And um, and a lot of the time, you know, like the the mix of of really low latency and actually helpful content and and um, helpful completions is what makes up the the vibe test. And um, I think part of it is also is it uh, is it returning to you or the the lack of it returning to you things that may look right but be completely wrong. Um, I think that also kind of affects the yeah, yeah. the the vibe test as well. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, th this is very much like a, like an interview question. Yeah. Um, the, the one with the number of processes that, that was definitely a vibe test. Like what kind of code style do you expect in this situation? Yeah. Uh, is this an, another example? Okay. Um, uh, yeah, this is another example for, uh, like, you know, with some more okay. explanations. Uh, should we look at the bar one first? Uh, uh, sure. These are, I think these are, yeah. Um, this right. is, uh, original GPT-3 with full size 175 uh, billion parameters. Okay, so you asked GPT-3, I'm a highly intelligent question answering bot. If you ask me a question that is rooted in truth, I'll give you the answer. If you ask me a question that is nonsense, um, I will respond with unknown. And then you ask it a question, what is the square root of a banana's banana? It answers nine. Yeah. Um, so complete hallucination and failed to follow the instruction that you gave it. Um, I wonder if it follows if other one if you use an instruction tune version it might yeah do what better uh on on the original gpt yeah because i like it yeah. just you're you're giving it instructions and it's not instruction tuned now now the interesting thing though is our model here which does follow the instructions uh this is not instruction tuned yet and mm. and we still okay. are planning to instruction right tune so it's it. like for like yeah. yeah exactly so um so this is the replit model um same question what is the square root of bananas banana and it answers unknown um and this being one of the, the things that Amjad was talking about, which uh, you guys are finding as a discovery, which is it's better on pure natural language questions, even though you trained it on code. Exactly, yeah. Hmm. Uh, is that, that because there's a lot of comments in? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I think part of it is that there's a lot of comments and um, there's also a lot of natural language in in a lot of code, right. Uh, right? There's like, you know, in markdowns, in terms of documentation, you know, you have a lot of uh, like markdowns and restructured text. And there's also just a lot of web-based code on, on Replit and HTML tends to have a lot of natural language in it. 
Um, but I don't think the comments from code would help it reason in this way, and you know where you can answer um, questions like based on instructions, for example. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's I know that that's like one of the things um, that really shocked us is the kind of the the fact that like it's really good at at natural language reasoning, even though it was trained on on code. Was this the reason that you started running your model on Hello Swag and yeah. all the other? Yeah, uh, exactly. Interesting. Um, and the yeah, it's it's kind of funny. Like it's uh, in some ways it kind of makes sense. I mean, a lot of um, like code involves a lot of reasoning and logic, which language models need mm -hmm. and need to develop and and whatnot. And so, um, you know, we we have this hunch that maybe that using that as part of the training beforehand and then training it on natural language above and beyond that really tends to help. Yeah. This is so interesting. I, I'm trying to think, how do you align a model on vibes? You know, like Bard, <laughs> Bard is not purposefully being bad, right? Like there's obviously something either in like the training data, like how you're running the process that like makes it so that the vibes are better. It's like when it, when it fails this test, like how do you go back to the team and say, hey, we need to get better at vibes. Let's yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a great question. It's a di it's very difficult to do. Um, it's not uh, you know so much.